Greetings, Bat Family. Welcome back to Holy Batcast, brought to you by Real Fans for Real Movies. Make sure you visit our website, holybatcast.com. It's your one-stop shop for all things Holy Batcast. But you can also find us all over those other websites and apps where you waste all your time. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Search for Holy Batcast. You will find us. You love the show. You want to help support us. You can do that on Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash holybatcast. And as always, a big thank you to all you who've done that. It means the world to us. It makes my life so much easier, and you guys really do keep the show running. You're like the engine in the Batmobile, and you keep us racing down those Gotham City streets. So thank you to the patrons. You guys rock. Uh, again, it's uh, holybatcast.com slash, or no, it's patreon.com slash holybatcast. Uh, we're part of the Real Fans Podcast Network. Check out all those shows at rf4rm.com. And as always, I'm your bat host, your bat pal. It's Andy DiGenova. You can follow me on Twitter or on Instagram. It's just my name, Andy DiGenova. Now, this episode is going to be all about the Riddler, about Edward Nigma himself. We've got the Batman imminent. It's coming before we know it. We're finally getting another big screen Riddler, and we thought it would be a great time to look back on the history of the character in media. And joining me for that is someone who's been waiting for another Riddler, I think, as long as I have. It's my old pal, Brendan Lowe. Hey, Brendan. Riddle me this, riddle me that. How you going? And who's afraid of the big brown koala? <laughs> While you're doing the intro, I was trying to think of a rhyme that I could fit in there, but I was like, no, I'll just go with the classic. That's fine. Yeah, that works. It works. Good job. I'm good. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this. It'll be fun. I'm feeling Riddler, Riddlericulous, Riddlerdiculous, Rid. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you know, really should have thought excited. this. Out. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I can't <laughs> wait. I'm really excited about it. Uh, no, I, I know that we both share a love for the Riddler. Jamie, we did offer, and he's like, eh, you guys are bigger Riddler fans than me. You guys go ahead. <laughs> so fine. The heck with him. When we do Ra's al Ghul, then, you know, next time he shows oh. up in a movie, God knows when that'll be. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll sit that one out. I'm not, I mean, I like Ra's. Don't get me wrong. We can just spend two hours uh, debating whether it's Ra's or Raish. Yes, I still say Raz. I've always said Raz. I'll Me always too. say Raz. Me too. I'm Team Raz. Yep. Uh, hashtag Team Raz. But I don't know if that works because it would be spelled the same as hashtag Team Raish. It would. Yes. Wouldn't really help. <laughs> no, you just have to put the H in brackets or something. Right. But then the hashtag wouldn't work anyway. Well, you'd have to spell it differently so it sounds like Raish, which is my whole point. Yeah, exactly. Phonetics. Huh. <laughs> anyway thanks for joining us everybody yeah good night everybody <laughs> hope you all are doing well uh we are here to talk about the riddler we're here to talk about villains but do you know what else can be villainous brendan um hairy sweaty balls hairy hairy sweaty balls just too much <laughs> just a jungle downstairs can be a villain unto itself like poison ivy goes out of control down there and sometimes you got you need your own bat equipment to whack those weeds <laughs> hand me down the weed whacking repellent bat spray yep 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 so for your utility belt folks you got to get manscaped i got to give a shout out to our sponsor manscaped they're great they're generous they're supportive and we love that and it just so happens that their products are excellent so manscaped has the, all the things that you need to do a little bit of trimming a little manscaping do it for your significant other your husband, your wife, your partner, your significant other, the person you just met a couple hours ago and you'll never see again. Still, your mistress. Still, out of courtesy, do it for them. And do it for you. <laughs> Manscaped is great. Their stuff is awesome. You get that great. Uh, what it was like the Power Pack 4.0 with the different trimmers and the and the deodorant and the toner and the boxers. A little bit of everything. They're awesome. And if you use Batscaped, our promo code, you're not only going to get 20% off and free shipping, you're also going to help us at Holy Batcast. You're going to support us. So you're buying yourself something, you're doing something nice for you, you're doing something nice for your partner, and you're doing something nice for us. And we appreciate it. We really do. I know I'm, I'm, you know, I'm half joking here, but I'm totally serious when I say every one of you who makes this purchase and uses Batscaped, you are helping out the show. And we can't thank you enough for that. So... I stand by the products. I use them daily. Jamie and Brendan do as well. Manscaped. Sure yeah, they're, they're really great. Um, Manscaped generously gave us a little sampling, and 
they're awesome. So I don't think you'll be disappointed. Uh, the price is very reasonable. We talked about it. The battery is great. The design is great. They're just like super sleek and easy to use. And you can't beat 20% off and free shipping. So go to manscaped.com. Use that promo code BATSCAPED and uh, take control of your domain. Mm. And I mean, everyone now will have a legitimate reason to think of us when they're working on their balls. <laughs> I, I never quite thought of it that way, but I'm not mad at it. That's fine. I mean, I thought of you anyway, but now oh it's like my God. legitimate reason. Yeah, I'm yeah, not, yeah. Not show out. Do, like, while you're listening to the show. <laughs> yes. Multitask. Take care of it. Be- I do listen to podcasts in the shower. So. Oh, do you? I, I do not. It weirds me out. Oh, I do all the time. I tried, and I was like, no, I just feel like I'm showering with some either strangers or friends. It's just weird. Well, <laughs> it's never a bad time. Yeah. So, um, but no, I'm, I'm serious. Like, I'm, and it cuts down Nick's big time. I used to use the trimmers from Target, and they were fine. You know, they, they did the job, but man, I'd always get all nicked up. Manscaped, almost never get Nick's. So, I don't know how they do it. And and if you ever nick down there, holy hell. It's not fun, no. <laughs> you bleed like a stuck pig. Yeah, it's not a good time. So, yeah. Save 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 your sack, guys. Get manscaped. I, <laughs> what a way to end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't think that's actually their slogan, but it should be. Manscaped. If, save your sack. Yeah, manscaped if you're listening, which I think you are because they check, make sure that we talk about them. Save your sack. Copyright. Holy Batcast. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I don't know what they think of us talking about the products. Uh, they're they're that's the, that's the thing though. They're like they're cool. It. Yeah, they're like they're really cool. When you read the stuff they send or the, their own promo stuff, like they have a good sense of humor about they what they know do. What their demographic is, they know what they're audience. selling, and and exactly. that, that's all good. So anyway, let's move forward. Let's have a celebration of one of Batman's most iconic villains. Let's do a little history lesson on the Riddler. He wrote with Jiggy, my grand committee, robbing every car from Piggy Bang Blind. Take a journey through the mind of a Riddler. Now, I'm just going to assume you're dropping Method Man in there. Oh, I'm, maybe I will. I, I hadn't thought that far ahead. It was either that or the Spank Me Overture. <laughs> hey, that works. Too. But, but maybe Method Man is going to be better. Uh, so, yes, like, uh, seriously, if you guys have been listening to the show uh, since the beginning, you know I love the Riddler. Uh, Brendan loves the Riddler as well. And for years now, throughout the whole Dark Knight trilogy especially, um, we wanted a return of the Riddler on the big screen, and we're finally getting it with the Batman very, very soon. And we thought it was a cause for celebration. Uh, And so we thought it would just be fun to kind of look back at the Riddler's different appearances in media. Now, I should start with a disclaimer. This is not going to be comprehensive because we would be here for eight hours and ain't nobody got time for that. So I pulled out the ones that I think everybody is pretty familiar with. Uh, I apologize in advance if I miss your favorite. Maybe maybe you're like, oh, you didn't mention Detective Comics number 527. That's my favorite Riddler story. And for that, I apologize. I can't get it all, but I think I got some notable Riddler uh, appearances. Again, mostly through different types of media. And we'll just talk through it, little little walk down Riddler memory lane. So sound good, Brandon? Sure does. Yeah, I've got good the way list to here in front of me, and I'm ready to go. All right, good way to tee up and get ready for him to terrorize Robert Pattinson's Batman. Uh, but couldn't do that until he shows up in the comics. Nope. Nope. So he did show up in the comics. He showed up in Detective Comics number one forty, and that was in October of nineteen forty eight. Is created by Bill Finger, like so many uh, different elements of the Batman's world, and Dick Sprang. So two absolute legends, Bill Finger and Dick Sprang. They created the Riddler, and so, yep, he popped up nine years after Batman did. Mm, it's a little while. Yeah, for some reason I thought it was earlier, but I guess not. Well, it's one of those things, and I mean, I'm sure we'll, we'll talk to it uh, very soon, but like, the Riddler was kind of dead and buried for a long time there like the he only became a heavy hitter 
with the advent of the TV show. Yeah, yeah. But, I, I mean, we knew that as he was created in the comics. I guess, again, in my brain, it was just a little bit closer to Batman mm-hmm. making his debut because so many of the other rogues galleries did show up pretty soon, you know? Joker yeah. showed up, like, a year later. Catwoman. Catwoman was early. Yeah, like, all of them were, like, within a year or two of Batman, and so the Riddler, nine years, is actually quite a bit. A little surprised. Um, but, you know, I've never read that original Riddler story, which is, I'm a little ashamed to admit. Well, I mean, I don't think I have. I mean, I read, like, back in 2005, I read a lot of, like, the the collections of the really old comics. And I mean, I honestly can't remember if I have or not. Um, I did a little, like, just, you know, Google about what, what the story was. And, I mean, it's very Riddler. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's one of those things. They're, they're that old, the stories, you know. And, like, it's not like you can just get a first appearance of the Riddler from the comic shop and read it because I mean well if you could it would cost a lot of money I'm sure I I, um, I should have tried that I should have just gone to the local comic shop and I was like yeah do you have the do you have the first appearance of the Riddler I just want some light reading tonight <laughs> um but yeah it's it, it's you can be forgiven for not not reading the first appearance of a lot of these characters just because it's they're not that easy to come by I wouldn't think yeah it would be cool if they released like a Riddler story compilation the way they've they used to do that in the past all the time and, and it would just be select stories throughout the years including the first appearance and then notable stories after that would be really cool if they released that in conjunction with the Batman I would buy that that'd be really fun oh, hell yeah i'd have it on the shelf for sure like i've got like the greatest joker stories ever told and everything exactly so one be would be nice yeah and that's what i'm thinking of is i'm when you know batman 89 came out there was that that the greatest joker stories ever told you should have the greatest riddler stories ever told mm-hmm. but maybe that first story wasn't great because like you said he sort of went into hibernation you know he showed up in the comics and then he just kind of went away he didn't capture the zeitgeist the way the joker or catwoman did until almost 20 years later because when they were making the batman tv show in 1966 someone making that show like dug through a bunch of old comics and went hey this guy's got potential the riddler let's but bring the him pilot. back yeah yeah exactly no and and kicking off the show with him in the pilot which we did a commentary for what year year and a half ago yes yeah, yeah, i think it was last year yeah which was fun so yeah like the Riddler was resurrected out of obscurity and became a heavy hitter almost immediately because of the Batman TV series in 1966. He was in the pilot, like we said, and Frank Gorshin over the three seasons was in 10 episodes as the Riddler. And then many people forget that in the second season, John Astin from the Adams family with, filled with in. With mustache and everything. Yeah, filled in. And I always forgot about that. It's so random. I think even as a kid, that episode randomly came on and I was so confused. It didn't make any sense. I'm like, wait, that's that's not the Riddler. And nobody acknowledges that it's a different actor. No, well, I. it's funny. I kind of have the reverse memory. I mean, obviously, Frank Orshin is, is the Riddler from that era for me. Um, but I can still remember very clearly seeing that episode with Aston for the first time and being a little confused, but mum being like that, no, that's Gomez Adams. Cause like they were showing reruns of the Adams family around the same time as well. And just kind of my little mind being blown that Gomez Adams played the Riddler mm-hmm. in this random. Ep- and I think maybe I thought he played it for more than what he did. Um, but yeah, it is, it is funny now sort of just seeing that one episode thrown in, but I mean, the show was known for recasting <laughs> for, yeah. for villains. So, well, it's funny because yeah. there were, you know, there were some villains that were played by multiple actors, and then there were some actors who played multiple villains. True. So, yeah, you know, they played fast and loose with it, but yeah, no explanation. But he only did the one two parter in season two, and then Frank Gorshin came back for season three. So, Frank Gorshin is the Riddler for that show. Um, but you got to give a little respect I mean, to John. You could argue that he is the Riddler period. You could, you could. Cause I mean, he just owned that in role. Live action anyway. Yeah, yeah. Just owned it. He was just so great in it. And I've said it in the past, but I'm going to say it again is like people remember the manic quality of Frank Gorshin, but they forget that that was not all the time. 
that he had a lot more layers and a lot more range than he often is given credit for when he played the Riddler. He certainly got manic on occasion, but at the same time, he also had these great moments where he was pacing back and forth and just trying to figure things out and work out things. And you saw the more uh, intelligent side of him as well. So he was just, he just took that role and made it his own and turned the Riddler from a nobody into a superstar. And I think you can pretty much give that credit to Frank Gorshin. I mean, look, not wanting to jump ahead because we will talk about it, but you know, if you were going to, if you were looking for a nineties version of Frank Gorshin, you know, whether you like or hate the movie or whatever, like I do think Jim Carrey was a smart choice. Um, for that but again they played up the manic but we'll get to it but yeah i just i I think you need to sort of mention both when when you're having a conversation no you don't you really don't (laughs) i know we'll get to it we will get to it um but i mean that's sort of the point i'm making is like no people only remember people only remember the him jumping up and and giggling, which is great. And he was so great at that, but they forget that he did a lot more than just that. Yes. He was diabolical. He was conniving. He was scheming and he was so much fun to watch. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the point I was trying to make without wanting to dive into it too much. Yeah. Um, but he not only did the 10 episodes of the series, but then he also played the Riddler on the big screen in Batman, the movie in 1966. Which I think may have been my introduction to the character. Ah. Um, I, when I started watching Batman in 1989, I don't know how many episodes I'd seen before the movie, like before I saw the movie. Um, and they showed the movie like, like you know, prime time dur- during the week one night. Because, I mean, Batman... 89 had just come out so the world was back crazy so you know it it kind of you know it's it's more of a midday movie now when you think about it Mm -hmm. but back then in 1989 and i mean you got to think too i mean the movie was only what 22 23 years old yeah (laughs) back then like it was you know less time had passed between then than what batman 89 has now you know (laughs) but it always felt like an old movie Mm -hmm, um But yeah, I don't remember if I'd seen any Riddler episodes before seeing the movie, but because we taped the movie, (laughs) you know, it got played on loop for years. So, you know, Frank Orshin, you know, when I think of Frank Orshin as the Riddler, I I do think of of Batman the movie. Yeah. No, it's so true. The torpedoes and everything Mm -hmm. like that. To me, that's Frank Orshin's Riddler. Yeah. No, I mean, and they go hand in hand, but you're right. Like I had this movie taped off of TV on VHS. And like you said, it got more play than any episode of the show because I got all four. Exactly. So, and that's why, you know, the episode we did recently about favorite villain, it's like, it's really hard to pick just one. And in my brain, just goes like it it instantly goes to the the big four from the 60s show and that's why Mm -hmm. it's because i watched it so much and they were your big four villains you know if you got an episode with one of those four you knew you're in for a good time yeah it's crazy and you know what it it is weird that you know again previous to the show and the movie the riddler was pretty obscure but because of the show and the movie those four really became cemented as the big four Mm -hmm. And it continues to this day. And it's crazy because I feel like there's almost a source amnesia as to why those are the big four. But it almost became like a snowball thing is because the show, you know, the show decided those were the big four for the movie. Those became the main four. And so then for 20, 25 years before the, the new movie started happening whenever they would make merchandise, action figures, whatever. If it was Batman and Robin merchandise, they always made sure that those four characters were in the mix because everyone expected it. And it wasn't even tied to the TV show anymore. It just became an expectation of consumers of, oh, if you've got Batman, of course you're going to have Joker, Penguin, Catwoman, Riddler. Of course you are. And so well, Riddler I'm- just became mixed in there as someone you always expect to see. I'm literally sitting here looking now at my one of my Batman shelves, and um, oh, it was Toy Biz that had the original Batman line, yeah. wasn't it? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, but they had the is it the superpower friends or yep. the superpower Super, line? Superpowers. Like I'm looking, I've still got. He's sitting on my shelf, looking at me. My Riddler from that line that I got for Christmas 1989, mm-hmm. and it, it he looks like it's it's weird. Like he looks like he's kind of wearing the Frank Gorshin suit, mm-hmm. but he's got the black hair like John yeah. Aston. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of like a nice mix of the both. Yeah, I mean, and that was sort of what I was getting at is because of the show. There was this expectation of, oh, the Riddler's always going to be around. And so then that, whenever they did Batman cartoons, he, Riddler was mixed in there. When they did, yeah, like you said, the superpowers line in the 80s, they had to have an action figure of the Riddler. Then they half resurrected superpowers when Batman 89 hit big and they did the DC superheroes line, but a lot of them were just repurposed sculpts from superpowers and the Riddler was in there, even though he wasn't in the movie. So there just became this expectation with Batman's universe is that Riddler should always be around, which is part of why I get, I get frustrated because some, sometimes in some media, like the hush animated movie where they're like, Oh, the C lister, the Riddler. I'm like, what the hell planet are you living on? Are you living in 1950? He hasn't been a C-lister since 1966. No, that's true. Um, I, um, <laughs> I must mention too, while we, you know, we were discussing the the 66 movie, um, the egregious use of a stunt double. <laughs> anytime there's a fight, like it stands out more than anything when it's when it's frank gorshin stunt double it, yeah. it's, it's terrible absolutely terrible but i love it <laughs> yeah it's i mean yes that was that was always true of that i always thought robin was the most egregious yeah yeah but i think overall in the series you're right. i think in the movie like <laughs> right. it's, it's definitely the riddler stunt double man yeah. <laughs> but i mean i i love that 66 movie and i always thought it was so interesting that in that movie it really I don't know, like the fact that they were all equals Mm -hmm. and half the time the Riddler felt like he was the one in charge was very surprising about that movie. Have we ever done a commentary for that? I don't think so. That'd be a fun episode. Yeah, I'm sure we will. I'm sure we've done a review of it, but I don't think we've done a commentary. Yeah, I think you're right. That'd be a hell of a lot of fun, actually. Mm Mm-hmm. So, yeah, Batman the movie, 1966, and then uh, the show ended in 1968, but animation was there to pick up the baton and run with it. So then we started getting a bunch of animated DC properties. A lot of it focused around Batman, because even though the show had run its course, kids knew Batman now. Batman also was, I don't want to say he was resurrected from obscurity, but he became a hot property again. Even without the show, now Batman was a pop culture mainstay because of the 60s show. And so all these other companies were like, well, then we'll make cartoons about Batman. Yeah, I mean, man, the 60s, it's, ever, you know, that famous saying, the three Bs, the 60s were Beatles, Bond, and Batman. Yeah. And it's true. Yeah. And so in 1968, there was the Filmation Batman animated series, and it is the Batman Superman Hour was how it was here in the States, but then they also would cut them up and it would also be the adventures of Batman. Yeah. And that's how I know it. It, it, I got to know this show around 91, 92. Um, it was on a, like an after school, um, cartoon show. And yeah, like, you know, they obviously, I guess the rights for this one probably would have been cheap to get around the time, but it was still Batman. Um, so I watched it that, but also the local video store had multiple volumes mm-hmm. of, of this as well, you know, with the Caesar inducing opening credits with the flashing blue and red and <laughs> everything and the, that crazy theme song. Oh and, yeah. 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 It, uh, I, I have a, a, I have a real soft spot for this show as well. It, it was, it was very much an extension of the sixties show. Right. But and that's what del- it was like doing deliberately deliberately yeah yeah that i mean um, it was it was capitalizing off of that while not being that yeah and look it's it's not how do i say this it's not good but it's it is good if that makes sense like i i i really like it it's and i think it is significantly better than the animated series that followed Mm, this okay. one, which was the, that had the Batmite and where it was, uh, you the, know, the new adventures. Adam, yeah. yeah. Adam and Bert came back to do the voices and stuff like this version. Um, 
is is much better. And what? Oh god, I'm blanking. What was his name? Who voiced Robin? Um, Casey Kasem. Casey Kasem. Yes, yeah. thank you. Yeah, really, really good show. But the Riddler in this, if you remember, it, <laughs> his voice is very bizarre. Like everything is broken. He never says a complete sentence. Like, oh it's, wow! It's really weird. Yeah really weird but but a lot of fun yeah well so this show is one of my great heartbreaks of my childhood and here's why yes and here's why because when i was you know again this would have been the late 80s early 90s when i was really all in on batman fever and superheroes and i used to go to suncoast video did you have suncoast video no Oh, it was it was a magical place. It was in the mall and it was all VHS tapes and movie memorabilia. It was wonderful. That I, sounds was it a rental or like No, purchase store. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's this oh. that sounds awesome. It was. So it was yeah, it was all VHS tapes, but then you would get like t shirts of the latest big movies and it was really fun. All it was a movie lover's n- nerd dream. Oh god, I just watched something where he worked at Suncoast Video. I think it was that movie Take Me Home Tonight, maybe? Anyway. Um <laughs> Point is, is like I would always go into Suncoast Video and they had the VHS tapes and they had the artwork of the superpowers on them. And so it was like a Batman, a Superman, an Aquaman, and I'm not even sure what the fourth one was. But I was like, oh, it's this is Super Friends. It's because they had they literally had the superpowers artwork on it. So I bought the Batman one and the Aquaman one. I probably spent 15 bucks each back in 1990 for these VHS tapes. And I take it home and I pop it in. It's the 1968 Adventures of Batman show. Okay. So it was a bit of a bait and switch. And I was very mad because I spent all of my birthday money on these things. And that is not the show I wanted to buy. <laughs> but it was still a good show. I mean, eh, sure. But not when that, and not when you think you're getting super friends. I guess so. And the Aquaman was like same. It was like a 60s filmation Aquaman show. Okay. So I've never seen that. Yeah, it's out there somewhere. Um, so anyway, that was my little bit of bitterness. I don't remember that the Riddler talked that way, but the Riddler's voice was done by Ted Knight. Do you know who Ted Knight is? The name is familiar, but I'm not sure. He is a character actor, but most well known for the Mary Tyler Moore show. Uh, okay. He was yeah, in. I've never he, watched the Mary Tyler Moore. He show. was in Too Close for Comfort, which was another big sitcom in the '80s, and he was in Caddyshack. Okay. He did a lot of voice work before he like hit it big oh, in I've sitcoms. Just done a, I've just done a yeah, I yeah, I, I know him. When you sure. see it you I, go, Oh yeah, yeah, that guy. Yeah. But that's funny that he was a Riddler. Uh anyway, so that was uh the adventures of Batman, but as you said, it wasn't long before we had the new adventures of Batman in nineteen seventy seven. Uh this one was also filmation. And so this one, I think even more purposefully is trying to say, and I think that's why it's called the new Avengers. It's trying to say that it's a continuation of the 60s show. Yeah. And that's why they got Adam West. I didn't become familiar that like, I didn't know this show existed until, oh shit, maybe my late twenties, early thirties. Um, when I saw it come available to buy, um, and I think, kind of similar with what the story you just told i think i bought it thinking it was the 1968 one Mm -hmm. and when i got it i'm like this isn't the one i remember and adam west and burt wood didn't do the voices and batmite wasn't in it and man this is weird um but yeah it's it's a bit of an acid trip this version yeah it is it's crazy because yes this is batmite uh which is uh a filmation staple was them always throwing in some magical little imp. Mm-hmm. Cause you think about Orko or yeah. Looky in she They always had like this magical little imp thing. Even in the Brady, the Brady kids cartoon, they had these, uh, they had like a little magical bird that was <laughs> flying around. <laughs> it was crazy. So they were like, Oh, well we, we can't do this without a magical little imp. So, Great, Batmite's in this too. Um, I do like this one. I feel like we've talked about this one on the show, but the crazy thing about this one is that the Riddler is in the opening credits, but he was never on the show. And his costume is terrible. And in the credits, he's pink. Yep. And again, it's one of those things where they weren't allowed to use him because at this point, this was running concurrently with Super Friends. 
And so oh, okay. they split up the characters and said, Hanna Barbera, who's making Super Friends, you get these characters. Filmation, you get these characters. Right. And I don't think I knew that. So Filmation did not have the rights to the Riddler, but they still put him in the opening. And I don't know if everyone just kind of went, oh, fine, whatever, you're Filmation. Um, but they sort of got away with it. And maybe that's why he's pink. Is so they could say, oh, that's not the Riddler. That's the Puzzler. The Riddler wears green. The Puzzler wears pink. Yeah, you could be right. It's totally different. But he's just in the opening. Never showed up in the show. No, they replaced him with the classic villain Sweet Tooth. Ah, oh, Sweet Tooth. Paul Lind. <laughs> terrible. <laughs> well, here's the thing about Sweet Tooth. Yes, he's terrible. But he is Paul Lind, and Paul Lind is fabulous. That's and, true. And he's so, even though he, he is so ridiculous, but he is so in line with one of the original villains from the 60s. Like how remember, yes. how they would just make up random villains with a gimmick? Sweet Tooth oh, is sure. exactly what that would be. No, exactly. Yeah, no. It, you, you are right. And I it, look, it may have worked better in live action, but the way they do in the cartoon. And he comes at, like, he's in it quite a bit from memory. Like, Sweet Tooth is a recurring character. In wow. That, that version. Well, like, I'm yeah. waiting for the gritty reboot of Sweet Tooth. I'll, <laughs> I'll be over here waiting. You know, you could actually, yeah, have, like, some psycho dentist who, like, tortures people's Ooh, mouths and see stuff. Yeah. see that ain't bad i'd buy that for a dollar okay i just sent you the cover for the vhs that fooled me and it's even yes. more it's even more egregious than i remember because they literally slapped the superpowers logo on it yeah Lies. It's like five sensational stories it doesn't say stories from you know, from Batman the from stories. the damn 60s yeah yeah Anyway. But I sent you the photos of the, the cover art for the videos that I would rent from that. And yeah, I forget, those covers are really cool. They're awesome. I love it. I mean, now I, w- I still wish I had that VHS just for the fun of it. But at the time when money was scarce because I was 11 years old, I was a little upset. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, you still got Batman, which couldn't have been upset you too much. Yeah, it, it just wasn't what I was wanting. And especially because you think about then, yeah. media was harder to find true so it's not like oh well then i can just go rent the superpowers cartoon no you can't it doesn't work that way yeah no you're right unlike now where yeah go on youtube or hbo max or itunes or wherever i can find it but back then not so much so anyway we talked a lot about um about the riddler not being in the adventures of batman and then he does show up or no he shows up in the opening of the new adventures of batman Uh, But he couldn't be in it for real because of Hanna-Barbera, because at this point they were doing Super Friends. And so they were using the Riddler. And I think this is maybe the rare time where the Riddler was actually part of the Legion of Doom. Yeah, he was an odd addition. But again, you know, running off the back of the 60s show, he was one of Batman's main villains. So I, I understand why you would use him. Yeah. Because I think maybe they couldn't use Joker. Because Filmation might have really? had Joker. Uh, oh, I don't I know. I guess because Lex, Lex was a big part of yeah. the Legion of Doom. Oh I, my god, I, now yeah, I want to see who the Legion of, of Doom was. <clears throat> because in my mind's eye, of course Joker's there, but I now that I really think about it, I don't know if he was. I'm going to tell you right now. Challenge of the Super Friends... Black Manta, Giganta, Toy Man, Riddler, Bizarro, Scarecrow, Lex Luthor, Captain Cold, Cheetah, Solomon Grundy, Gorilla Grodd, Brainiac, and Sinestro. No Joker. There you go. No Joker. The more you know. Well, there you have it. So on Challenge of the Super Friends, the Riddler was part of the Legion of Doom. Now, I've, I've watched a bunch of Super Friends, but I, I haven't watched all of it. Well, there's um, there's so many versions over the there years. There are, yeah, there are, which is yeah. part of the fun of it, but also it makes it really confusing to try and find the ones you're looking for. Yeah, I I like I own on DVD the version that <clears throat> that introduced Cyborg, and that's um, the Superpowers one. That's the Superpower show. Yeah, because it was all about introducing I've Cyborg got... and Firestorm. Yes, yeah, but and that's the one too that's got the um the scarecrow episode that actually delves into yeah the um, origin batman's origin yeah the origin of batman yeah 
and and cyborg voiced by annie hudson yeah heck yeah me and scotty reviewed those episodes like you did two yeah. two and a half years ago you did i was thrilled <laughs> yeah it was super fun but anyway so challenge of the super fan the super friends from hanna barbera the Riddler was part of the Legion of Doom. And then he continued in Super Friends in 1980. Again, like every year they renamed Super Friends. But he did have an episode there called Around the World in 80 Riddles. And his voice there was Michael Bell, who is not like Ted Knight. I don't know who that is. No. <laughs> and I, I honestly don't think I've seen that episode. I don't think so either, but it made me want to see it. Makes me want to seek out all of these in preparation HBO Max, if they were smart, they would take all those Riddler episodes and put them in just a playlist or something so I could enjoy them all. If HBO Max was smart, they'd bring HBO Max to Australia. <laughs> yeah, well, sucks to be you. Yeah, well. Um, right around that same time in 1979, though, we got the return of Frank Gorshin in the Legends of the Superheroes TV specials. The only thing I know about these is when you and Jamie... Was it you and Jamie? Yeah, yeah, we, we reviewed, reviewed them both. Them. I've I, I'd never heard of them and I've never seen them. Oh my God. They're definitely worth watching. They're super I, yeah. fun. Um, hey, you didn't watch them when we reviewed them on the show. Well, I, I, I like, they're not available over here. Oh, I've no, I've never seen them. Like I've never had the opportunity to see them. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Well, they are fun, and, and if you listen to the episodes, you know what they were. But I do love that, God, what it would have been. It would have been 11 years later, Adam West came back, Burt Ward came back, and Frank Gorshin came back as the Riddler. His How costume was really messy. His <laughs> cost, he, he looked fine, you know. He looked a little older, of course, didn't it? but his costume was a mess. Like, they didn't even have the production quality of the show, so all their costumes were a little wonky too. And I just remember he was wearing the green jumpsuit, but he was wearing big black like industrial gloves. Like you would buy at a hardware right. store. So I just love that. But I love the continuity of him coming back again 11 years later. Yeah, I, I have to see. I might be able to find it on the Seven Seas, but yeah, I've, I've just never. I'm had the sure. I'm to see sure it. they're out there, especially now that they've been available officially. Because for years, these were things that were only bootleg at Comic Con, where mm -hmm. you just buy old VHS tapes of it. But then they released on DVD as part of the archive collection from Warner Brothers. Then they were on DC Universe. Not, I, I haven't checked if they're on HBO Max, but. They might be because a lot of the DC Universe stuff made its way over there. But because they've been available officially, someone had to have ripped them and put them out there. Yeah, I have to have it. I mean, in saying that, too, I haven't like looked hard to find them either. But yeah, it's, it's something I've never come across. Well, I mean, if they were available to buy over here, I'd definitely get them for no other reason to have them on my shelf. But yeah, I've just never seen them. I, I own the DVD. Of course you do. <laughs> of course I do. Um, <laughs> For the same reason I would if I could. Yeah, like, of course. But here's the funny thing is these were live action specials. It was two one hour specials and they were produced by Hanna-Barbera. Mm, what year was this again? 79. Yeah, it's it's very much of its time. Oh, isn't yeah. It? <laughs> but it's funny because like because Hanna-Barbera produced these, they could only use the characters they had the rights for. So hence you get Riddler again. Yeah. Would have, been, was, would have been so funny if Caesar Romero came back, but he obviously couldn't. Yeah, but. yeah. But anyway, I just I just love that he, Frank Gorshin, returned to the role. Yeah, good on him. Um, but then we have a huge gap between Super Friends and the next time we see the Riddler in any real momentous type of media, because we don't get him again until Batman the Animated Series in 1992. Yeah. So in uh, B-Taz, it is voiced by John Glover. He was in, obviously, the original run, and then he was in the new Adventures of Batman and Robin. Or no, it was just the Adventures of Batman and Robin. No, mm -hmm. was it the new Adventures? Look at us. We're terrible fans. Oh, my God. We are so fired. See, to me, fired. to me... That's because we were just talking about the other one. Yeah. To me, that's just Batman the Animated Series Season 4. I know, exactly. And I always forget what they renamed it. 
Oh, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Then, no, the new Batman me, yeah. Adventures. See, so I wasn't even right. So, no, there do you know you what it was? It was Batman the Animated Series. Then it was the Adventures of Batman and Robin. And then it was the new Batman Adventures. Yeah. You got all that? Not at all confusing. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. When it's just the same show. <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's Batman the Animated Series, different damn it. Credits. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> His mama named him Batman the Animated Series. I'm going to call him Batman the Animated Series. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, we got the Riddler here and here we got an amazing version of the Riddler. If I can say so. Maybe my favorite. Yeah, maybe. I feel like, you know, this was the time when they were reinventing all of the classic Batman villains because of the new films. And so the oh, film, exactly. so the films got to it, got to Joker, Penguin and Catwoman first. And so those carried over one way or another to animated series. Not completely. Obviously, animated series still was able to do their own thing with those, but some of the work was already done for them. But Mm -hmm. then the animated series got to touch certain characters and reinvent them completely independently. Obviously, Mr. Freeze is one of the most uh, notable examples of that, but the Riddler, too, of really saying, okay, what does the Riddler look like in the 90s? how do we make him different? How do we bring him up to date? And I think they did an amazing job of creating a Riddler for the ages. He's a great version of the character. Um, he's a lot more cold and calculating and smart. You don't get the manic side to the Riddler in this. No, not at all. Not at all. He is he is much more the intellectual, the one who's just there to prove that he's the smartest guy in the room, which is one of the things I love about the character. And John Glover is just such a great actor, and he gives such a great performance as Edward Nigma. This is a this is an amazing version of the character. It is. And uh, whenever I think of this version of the Riddler, there's this I, I you might know what I'm talking about, but in the scene where you sort of first see him in costume in if you're so smart why aren't you rich Mm -hmm. when he's in shadow yeah and they kind of and he says his name's the riddler they kind of do this zoom in and it's hard to verbalize like it it doesn't look like the rest of the cartoon Mm -hmm. like it kind of looks like a still painting and you just sort of see his face and like a hint of the purple mask and it's a it's one of the best images of the Riddler ever. It's yeah, so yeah. damn good. Well, you and know, it's you know such it's such about? a great introduction. Oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. I know the moment because it's such a great mm-hmm. introduction to who the Riddler is going to be in this show. Yeah. And it is. It's like it's this really awesome moment in the shadow of him stepping out in the suit. And it and it's awesome. The animation is great. And the staging of it is great. Yeah. Back in 2011 um, for Halloween, I dressed as the Riddler and I dressed specifically as this version of the Riddler. Nice. I yeah. did the Riddler. I'll have to post some photos. Yeah, I did the Riddler somewhere around 2015. Is my guess? I did the Riddler yeah, for Halloween maybe. as well. Do you remember that? Uh, Were we friends? I, I, it doesn't ring a bell. Not as the Riddler. Yeah, yeah. I did the Riddler in, uh, in like 2015, somewhere in that neighborhood. I got a photo somewhere. Um, yeah, you have to dig it out. What's funny is I sprayed my whole, all my hair like bright orange, and then I put on the bowler hat, and you couldn't even see it anyway. <laughs> so it was a complete waste of time. But uh, other than that, the, so I, what version were you going for? Were you it, going for the Jim Carrey version? No, it was very comic book. Okay, but comic book, he's you know he's he's more often than not a redhead, and it, to me it was just like oh it's just an extra element to add to my costume where it doesn't look like me, right? And that was my thought process, but then it turned out not to matter because you couldn't even see the red hair. <laughs> That's funny. I didn't do the high top, like I didn't do the the almost pink high top. I went I went Puss- orange pussy. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, and when I, it's funny that you mentioned that introduction in the animated series because I distinctly remember my good friend Dillip, you know, who was my my best nerd friend growing up, and we used to spend hours talking about this shit before there even was podcasts. And I remember when we were talking about like the next Batman movie, he used that scene as an example of what he wanted to see of the Riddler in a movie. 
And he's like, oh, I just imagine him standing in a doorway in the shadows with the cane and it like zooming in on him and him introducing himself. And eh, that's not really what we got. No. I mean, we got the Riddler with a cane. You got a cane. You did get a cane. Yeah. And the my Riddler cane that I got for my costume is literally right here in my office in my corner. Just sitting in the corner I, by itself. Is it the gold one? Yeah. 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 I, you know what? I've got one. It's, <laughs> it's great. Not, it's not the one I used for my Riddler costume because that's not what he had in the animated series. It's more of just a straight cane. Uh-huh. Um, but I did see one of the, the ones that you're talking about on eBay years ago, and it was quite cheap. So I bought it thinking, you know, if I ever do the Riddler again, I'll have this cane. I've never done it again. I actually had to throw out the jacket. But um, yeah, I've got it leaning up against one of my Batman shelves. This is a cool little prop. Yep. And me too. It's so cool. And yeah, it's surprisingly cheap. I love that they make an official one for Halloween costumes. So I think I spent all 20 bucks on it and it looks so cool. Just propped up in the corner of my office. Mm-hmm. No, in the corner of my office too. Look yep. at that. Love that Riddler cane. Someday we'll meet in person and we'll and fight with our canes. canes. <laughs> yeah, we'll fight with our canes. Well, hey, we've got matching Riddler pajamas. So this is true. Good point. Mm. I really need you to see if I, I need you to post a photo or at least send it to me of you in, as the Riddler. Um, and I'll, we could do like a side by side comparison. It could be the artwork for this show. Oh, like a side by side comparison of us dressed as the Riddler. Yeah. <laughs> I will pull it out. And the photo. <laughs> okay. Um, so we, <laughs> so we had him in the animated series. Obviously he was pretty consistent in the original animated series. And then in the new Batman adventures, we had the redesign. Ugh. I didn't really like it. It was really bad. I'm with you. It was really ugly. Like they pretty much made him like bald. Yeah. And in like this weird, like I kind of went back to the, like the jumpsuit. Yeah. Look, and it's just, I mean, look, I love Batman, the animated series and the stories in season four are great, but I've never been a fan of the redesigns. Like I yeah. think we've said it yeah. on here before, like, like Batman. Okay. But like, I just like how the, I don't like how they, um, like, made him less advanced you know he went to having like sort of just like the little pouches on his belt and stuff like i think every version of the characters in that redesign were a downgrade to be no, perfectly honest i agree Maybe i totally scarecrow, agree like with the hangman style like he he became very like quite scary mm-hmm. but even then like i still think i preferred the you know the second version of the yeah. scarecrow no i agree with you same yeah the the new adventures one was such a weird choice but again most of them were we just and i I was glad is i felt like for years i thought i was alone and not liking the redesigns oh god no and then i'm so glad that now in the world of podcasting and we've talked about this and we've talked about it with our friends and fellow batman nerds it seems like everyone pretty much agrees that the original designs were better yeah which is good so yeah it was a weird choice but okay they did what they did um, but right there in there between Batman, the animated series and the new Batman adventures was Batman forever. So speaking of like the big four, you know, when you had Batman 89, you had the Joker, you had returns, you had Penguin and Catwoman. There was no way they weren't going to do the Riddler for the third. Oh, for sure. There's just, yeah. it, there was no other option. Um, and so we got the Riddler and remember all the, remember all the murmurs about Robin Williams? look not not really i i know them in hindsight Mm -hmm. um just because of of my age and like accessing movie media over here at that point was a whole different thing um so i i heard about that retroactively okay see for me i when i first knew there was a third batman movie coming like that was it was early 1995 oh so they had already shot it Oh, yeah. Yeah, I had no idea about any of this stuff. Like, I was blissfully uh, unaware. Okay. Yeah. Well, and I also wonder, like, how much of the Robin Williams thing was real and how much of it was just fan speculation or fan wish list. You know, that happens a lot now is is you'll hear rumors and go, oh, is this real? Do they actually want this person? Or is it just fans talking about it? Or is it fan casting? What is it? Um, 
I mean, I think there was probably some truth to it because it made a lot of sense. But also, again, we've talked about this in the past, is when you talk when you hear Tim Burton speak about it, he wasn't on Batman 3 for long. So I just don't know if it was that far along. But I remember when Batman 89 came out, there were already fan casting of, oh, when they make the rest, who should play the Penguin? Who should play the Riddler? Who should play Catwoman? And, and Penguin was always Danny DeVito. And Riddler was always Robin Williams. That was always the the fan cast out there. But yeah, um, that's not the way it went. I would have loved to have seen it. Oh, totally. I I I think he could have been great or would have been great, but yeah, just and, wasn't and in the cards. And when I picture Robin Williams in like as the Riddler, I picture him more kind of like the animated series. Yeah. Like yeah. Like the purple Mars, like having the purple um, motif a little bit more as well. Not just that that lot, you know what would you call it sort of lime green yeah i mean no i i agree like because i mean robin williams is not known for his physique so Mm -hmm. the jumpsuit probably (laughs) wasn't going to be the way to go or the unitard uh so it always made more sense that he would be the green suit the bowler hat that makes a lot more sense and like you said a little more animated series but since we were talking about it we talked about it with the animated series and now uh do you have a preference between the suit or the unitard both neither um look i think overall i like the suit um but i mean i'm not opposed to the unitard either just because it's what i grew up with um uh, look, I don't, I don't dislike the Jim Carrey look when he's got the suit jacket and bowler hat on. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's you know, it, I like how they sort of did it in unison. It sort of works kind of well, but uh, yeah, it's, I mean, Jim Carrey's Riddler was was pretty crazy. Yeah, what's funny is when I was a kid, I always preferred the unitard, and maybe it's just because. That was what I saw Frank Gorshin wear half the time. And to me, maybe it felt a little more superhero-y than a suit. Mm-hmm. So I think mm-hmm. as a kid, that was my preference because it just looked a little more comic booky. And then the older I got, the more I appreciated the suit. And Well, it hides a lot more, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, the Unitard doesn't leave much to the imagination. Indeed it doesn't. Uh, but now oh, I look, do... That, that Riddler's Jewish. Look at that. <laughs> uh, but now, I, I, I mean, I like them both. I do think that, though, the the suit and the bowler hat is sort of has become the go-to look for the Riddler, mm-hmm. you know, less so than the Unitard. But, I, yeah, I guess if I were making my perfect version, I would try to find room for both. Yeah. Because both I, looks I are very iconic. That's true. Um yeah, I, I think for me, when I think what a live action Riddler should look like, it's smart suit, tie, bowler hat, you know, maybe kind of like a an eye mask. But mm. yeah, it's it's very sort of prim and proper. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, speaking Which I'm of... I'm sure we'll talk about later. <laughs> speaking of Jim Carrey, uh, so he got the gig... Uh, hot off of a lot of hit movies. So we got Jim Carrey as our first Riddler on the big screen in uh, almost 30 years. Yeah. 95. Yeah. Yeah. 29 years. 29 years later. Um, and Which the cat is lot less time than Batman 89 to now. It's so crazy shut up. when you think Just about things up. like that. I know it's <laughs> awful when we think that, um, so, I mean, I don't I don't want to like regurgitate all, you know, why it doesn't necessarily work for me. Uh, you know, I'm not I'm not here to do that because it was still a big moment to get the Riddler back on the big screen for Batman Forever. And they leaned into it heavily because, you know, the two villains were Two-Face and the Riddler, and at that point Two-Face was not as well known because he wasn't one of the big no. 4, which is so crazy. No, exactly. And I meant to say before, and I know I've said it on this show before, but, you know, Batman the Animated Series is what introduced me to the villains that weren't the big four, you mm-hmm. know? Um, it, it was, yeah, because I'd never I'd never heard of 90% of them, because it was, for me, the, my knowledge of Batman was the 60s show, it was the, the cartoons we talked about before, and I... I hadn't really read many of the comics until Batman the Animated Series, and then I dived head head first into the Batman Adventures, 
which was an extension of the show. So that's how I, I got to know the wider rogues gallery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it makes perfect sense. So because, and I think that the general public was very much the same. Oh, they, for sure. You know, they, they knew the big four. Um, and I think that they probably had some passing knowledge of two face, but not the way they did the Riddler. And so I, I did always think it was cool that the motif they chose for the marketing was the question mark. Like, I do like that logo of the bat symbol with the question mark. I think it's a great oh, it's logo. it's awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. And I had a t-shirt of that months before the movie came out. I would love to have a t-shirt of that now. I think I got it at the WB store, honestly. As they were wow. selling a t-shirt of that logo a couple months in advance. And I remember buying it, wearing it to school. And I remember friends at school going oh i can't wait you know and so even then i was like a walking billboard for batman forever <laughs> but i mean you know with the jim carrey thing it's you know he was hired to be jim carrey let's be honest and i mean he jim carried maybe harder harder than he's ever jim carried before or since yeah um in that movie and you know looking at it at the time it made sense you know, to get this rubber-faced comedian actor who, at that point, like, yeah, he had some, some big box office success with, you know, Ace Ventura, Dumb and Dumber. I don't, I'm not sure if the second Ace Ventura had come out by that point, or it was it was coming out, like, you know, he was box office gold at the time, and, you, you know, it was, I think that's why it was kind of jarring, you know, 12 months later, as you know a kid to go and see the cable guy <laughs> expecting <laughs> expecting jim carrey to be the regular jim carrey and in that he's kind of in hindsight probably more of a perfect riddler than he was playing the riddler you know what i mean mm -hmm. um that obsessive you know if they the, the, you know they had that sort of stalker element to his riddler um and i guess the cable guy kind of showed him playing that really really dark but you know, I, I, I do like him in that movie. I know he's over the top. I know he's ridiculous, but I can appreciate the fact that, hey, that's what he was hired to do. And like I said, given what Jim Carrey was known for at the time, it, it does make sense. And I, I do look red hair and all. I do like the aesthetic of that Riddler. I don't. I, I, yeah, I reckon it's kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, generally, I like the way he looks. Like in the suit, especially like you said, like with the bowler hat and the jacket, I actually do like that look a lot. And even the unitard, I like that too. Um, this the the I don't like the one at the end. Yeah, the outfit at the end is is ridiculous. No, yeah. <laughs> or even the light up jacket. Like then it just gets yeah. sillier and sillier as the movie goes. But I do like sort of the classic looks of him there. I remember him saying though that he was like starving himself because of the unitard when he made that movie um yeah and and, and so in his gut for like six months or something oh my god interview, i remember watching yeah <laughs> yeah so uh and and i and i totally get what you're saying especially because he was coming off of ace ventura ace ventura 2 dumb and dumber the mask that was the jim the carrey mask, they of hired course. yeah yeah I forgot about the mask yeah um and so that's what he did and i think that he certainly has his moments of the movie i just i just feel like he came to it too early if they had gotten him two, especially three years later, I think he could have been an amazing Riddler. You know, once he learned a little bit of restraint, he just got so much better as an actor. But that didn't happen for a couple years after this. Really, with the Truman Show in 98 was when he learned, oh, wait, I don't have to play everything at an 11. Sometimes I can bring it back a little bit and then go big and then come back again. That's what that movie needed. That's what the Riddler needed. So... Mm. There are, I mean, he can, he is fun to watch. He can be fun to watch. He has some good bits, but he just needed to, a little restraint, but he was just, he, again, he was playing the whole thing at an 11 the whole time. And when people say, oh yeah, but yeah, it was, it was Frank Gorshin. I'm like, no, no, it wasn't. Go back and watch an episode of Batman 66 with Frank Gorshin and watch that he is not cranked to an 11 the whole time. He's just not. No. See, to me, it, it's, you know, comparing it to the 60s to me it's it's a 90s version of that you know more so when you get to batman and robin but i think they're just taking the parts that people remember deliberately so like you know when i say it's a 90s version or he's doing sort of the frank gorshin i 
I totally get what you mean, but I think the fact that everyone just remembers the manic, that's why that comes through so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think, but I think he's just as much the mask or Ace Ventura as he is Frank Gorshin. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, you say a couple of years later, maybe even, you know, 18 months later after he'd played the cable guy and yeah. people had seen that, if they could go, Oh, if we could have, you know, an amalgamation of the two, right. It could have been a, you know, I think he's a very good Riddler. I think he could have been a phenomenal Riddler. Yeah. He's, he certainly had it in him again. I just, uh, he needed a director who was willing to try to rein him in or he, you know, again, years later learned how to do it himself. Mm. Yeah. But I can't disagree. It is, it is what it is. And again, at that point, like it just almost felt like, another just string in the comedies he was making. The fact that it was a Batman movie is almost incidental. Yeah. Well, he was on, it's a hell of a run for, for even by today's standards. Like, yeah. To come out of obscurity pretty much with, um, Ace Ventura and then to just have hit after hit after hit after hit was, yeah, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. Well, and that's what I was saying is like, I completely understand the casting. I don't even, dislike the casting because of course it you got this this white hot star he just came you know like you said he just has had this heck of a streak um and the fact that he looks like the riddler is just a bonus like of course why wouldn't you pick him Mm -hmm. and especially because schumacher one of the first things he said is i want to go younger and cooler yeah he was already afraid that that that's what happened when michael keaton dropped out like the cast got younger yeah, well, except for Tommy Lee Jones, who's been old yeah, well. forever. <laughs> and see, that's another thing, too. Like, had Jim Carrey's Riddler been more subdued, what would Tommy Lee's Two-Face have been? Because Tommy Lee was trying to compete with Jim Carrey cranked 20. Mm. Yeah. yeah. The whole movie could have been better. Be interesting to see. Yeah, yeah. It would have nice to have seen the levels on both sides of it. But he's got a couple, you know, I mean, some people think he has a lot, but I, he's got some good lines in there. I think when we talked to him, I think we did the commentary. I like when he's like, if we kill him, he won't learn nothing. Mm. And I like, I do like the stalker element of Edward Nygma. Like that's, it's pretty creepy. Yeah. Yeah. So he was still out there, man. The Riddler was still out there. 1995 on coffee mugs and, Bus he stop posters and McDonald's and, and yeah, yeah, everywhere. Oh my god, I think I still have a cereal box of corn pops with Jim Carrey's Riddler right there on on the front of the box. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I but, loved corn pops. Oh, corn pops are great. We only had them for a little while here in Australia, and then they disappeared again. But yeah, we we don't have them now. But I loved them when we did have them. Yeah, they had the Batman Forever license, and I kept those boxes. We had, for us over here, it was Rice Bubbles had Batman Forever. Okay. And each box had a trading card in it. And I didn't I didn't particularly like Rice Bubbles that much, but boy, did I eat shitloads of boxes <laughs> to try and get all the cards. <laughs> yep. But, yep, he was everywhere. Did you ever see, like, like the the Halloween masks from 1995 where it wasn't just, like, the mask that goes over your eyes. It was, like, the full head mask of Jim Carrey's Riddler. My, f- my friend, I have a Robin one of those. Oh, those are so, that I bought, so damn creepy. I bought on my first trip to America oh back my God. in 2006 from, like, a costume shop on Hollywood Boulevard. I bought that and a michael keaton batman cow nice. and i've still i've still got that robin one and like part of me is like i'd love to just cut the robin mask out because yeah it's actually a pretty pretty decent mask but then also because it's still got the tags and everything attached and part of me is just like no nah, i think i'll just leave it yeah i have my batman cow i need to unpack it i think it's still in a box somewhere how am i gonna fight crime if i don't have my batman cow <laughs> mine's on a mannequin head in a cupboard just because i I don't have room to display everything. (laughs) Well, this is my second one. Because I had a Batman 89 cowl that me and my brother bought together because it was in our bedroom. Yeah, we've talked about that. Yeah, but it it, it just rotted eventually. Yeah. Yeah. It just sort of, you know, after time, the rubber got 
gross and it's just started rotting and so the new one that oh it's not that new anymore but the one i have now my brother actually gave to me as a gift oh nice yeah that's one of our few things that we have in common as batman oh if you're gonna have something in common what better it's a good one. Oh my god my brother made a batman 89 suit and it's really good and oh, really? oh my god and for years he would just go to any costume contest he could find in that suit and he won quite a few of them wow yeah we'll have to talk in more depth about that yeah i'll dig out some pictures of my brother though. yeah i'd like to know more about that that'd be cool yep so anyway the riddler batman forever was finally back on the big screen 1995 uh then we're back to animation into the Batman, your favorite. One of, yep. Yeah. The 2004 <laughs> show. Um, this one, I forgot that the voice was Robert England. Yeah. Completely forgot that until I was pulling stuff up for this episode. And I was like, oh my God, that's right. Freddy Krueger was the Riddler, which is actually really damn cool. Mm. And he has that Marilyn Manson look is what yeah. people always compared it to. Yeah. I'm not a huge fan of the aesthetic of the, the, like the character design for this one, but the episodes that he was in, he was, he was really good. I remember I'd have to rewatch it, but I do remember thinking the story was pretty good, but yeah, the look that, and I think that's, that's mine. And a lot of fans issue with that show is I feel like a lot of the looks, they just tried so hard to be different that it was too much. Mm-hmm. where you didn't have to go that far. And I feel like this is a good example of it. I mean, the outfit from the neck down was fine, but yeah, the weird, like long stringy hair and the black lipstick and like the goth thing was, it was a choice. Mm. I mean, look, the emo look was kind of in around the time, I guess, but um, yeah, like I said, there's a really cool episode where they get trapped in like a shipping container. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. And I think from memory, it actually delves like it delves into that version of the character's origin. I haven't seen it for years, mm. but it's one of my favorites of the series. And it's a it's a really good Riddler piece of media. Mm, nice. Well, here we go to this. We're recording this on a Friday night, Saturday morning. I think maybe that's what I'll watch with my uh, Saturday morning coffee. Well, next week, well, at the time of this recording, um, the Batman series gets a Blu-ray release here in Australia. Oh, nice. Um, and I am planning on getting it because it's, you know, it's one slimline Blu-ray case as opposed to five full DVD yeah, cases, yeah. which gives me some more shelf space. So Cool. Yeah. But yeah, I remember like, and, and that was something I just had to accept about that show is I'm like, okay, a lot of the characters look weird. What are you going to do? Like, um, but yeah, I, I do remember thinking the stories were good. But again, sometimes sometimes these guys just overthink it. And it's like, no, it's not that hard. Just do the Riddler. And you have nothing to say to that. Look, <laughs> I, I will get to it. Um, we'll get to it yeah but the batman 2004 and i think that's why it took me so long to give that show a chance too is i'd see the action figures and i'd be like what the hell is this i've heard that a lot um but yeah i i dived into that show because it launched over here um right when batman begins was hitting Mm. so you know and my brother was at that age my brother was the age that i was when batman forever came out so Batman Begins was his first like big introduction to the character and the Batman was his version of Batman the Animated Series. Um, so I'd watch the episodes with him all the time and I would read the comics when they came out. They were called the Batman Strikes from memory. Oh, um, yeah. So I was I was into that show from, from the get-go, so I just kind of took it as it was and, yeah, I loved it. Yeah. I still do. Well, we'll talk about it more eventually. I did, I, I did consider for this episode that we would do something with the Batman, but I was like, no, I want to make sure Jamie is on board when we do that. Yeah. I don't want to do it without him. And I, I really want it to be the next show that we review. (laughs) Really? You never mentioned it. That's odd. I know. Right. Hmm. Okay. Well noted. (laughs) Um, 
And so something we don't talk about enough on this show, and I've certainly heard it from the listeners, and you're right, we don't talk about it enough, it's video games. And it's not because we don't love it. It's just we, we're not, none of us spend a lot of time with video games. And so unfortunately, that is, that is more often than not our blind spot. But I did think it was worth mentioning. Um, now, he did show up in the Batman Forever game, which was a train wreck. I don't even remember that game. Oh my god, it's bad. Oh mate, I played that all the time. <laughs> oh god, I you know what? I tried to play it like two years ago. I got an emulator of it and everything. I'm like, I'm gonna play this because it was a game I never owned, and I tried to play it, and I, I like fell down a hole and couldn't get out of it. It was like the ET Atari game all over again. I was like, how did anyone play this damn thing? Well, I played it for hours and wow. hours, and hours. And the thing that was good about that good about it too is it was multiplayer. Yeah. Like one some one could be Batman, someone could be Robin. So me and my friend Ray, we played this game like for hours and hours and hours. Wow. Well, I did not have a lot of luck with it when I tried. <laughs> I gave up also pretty quickly. Um but do you remember just I'm not going to talk about every video game because I don't even know. I can't remember which other ones he's in, but the crazy thing was that at the end of the Batman Forever game, wasn't he the big boss? He like got like Bane Riddler. Big, yes, he got like massive. Yeah, <laughs> like he this like big super Riddler. Right, that's so weird. But okay. Um, what I wanted to talk about was the Arkham games. When we were talking about this episode, like the games are my blind spot. Yeah. That's what I just said. But what are you gonna do? Like we, it's worth mentioning because what's funny is that. I played a little bit of Arkham Asylum and Arkham Asylum was the first one in 2009. Um, And I played a little bit of Arkham City and they were both great games. It was just, again, it was a matter of time. It always is. It was just, I couldn't commit the time to either of them. So I did play a bit of those and then Arkham Knight and Arkham Origins. I, at that point I was out. Um, But the Riddler was a mainstay in all of them because there were all of the side quest Riddler trophies. And so even for people who don't play the games, I feel like we all know about the Riddler trophies because apparently they were a source of much frustration for gamers because there were a million of them and it was really hard to get them all. At least that's the impression I get. Yeah, same. Like, I I played the first Arkham game for a little bit, but even then, like, it was several years old. I think the second one had already come out. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, I, I never got into the side missions or anything like that. It's, yeah... So, um, but in the games, the Riddler was voiced by Wally Wingert. And I do just appreciate that this Riddler's influence was so strong that, uh, that again, like you saw memes going around with the Batman coming out of like, oh, now we know how the Riddler takes down the Batman. And it's just like the trophy from the (laughs) Arkham games. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the fun part is that Wally Wingert is the voice, but he also voiced the Riddler in the two animated films that were based on the 60s show. So oh, nice. Return of the Cape Crusaders and Batman vs. Two-Face, Wally Wingert was the, also the Riddler in those. I love Return of the Cape Crusaders. I like them both. It's been a while since I've watched them, but I really like both of them. I think they're so I, good. For some reason, I couldn't get into the Two-Face one as much. Hmm. Um, but I I love like the two face like the first one is it's just a balls to the wall comedy yeah I, I love it it's so much fun yeah I I'm down to revisit them it's been a it's been a minute in fact I sometimes I forget about them which makes me sad but yeah they're so good and right. but I do remember that like Wally Winger isn't really trying to do Gorshin. I think that was one of my nitpicks, if I'm remembering correctly, is when we when we reviewed it, I was like, oh, I just wish he he sounded more like Frank Gorshin because that's who he's supposed to be. He's literally supposed it's to be supposed that same to be, version. Yeah. yeah. So Yeah, it's there's a there's a few like as much as good as those movies are, there are a few little head scratch things. It's like, well, you're doing the sixty show. I mean, I know the one for you as well. The same for me, it's like, why is the Batmobile driving out? to the left yeah like, why is not... it going the wrong way yeah 
yeah, little things like that, where it's like, what are you doing? But yeah, again, yeah. I, the fact that those movies exist is just still mind blowing all these years later. Yep. So, but anyway, I, I just like the fun that he's gotten to play the Riddler in a lot of different things. And since we were just talking about animated movies, there are also plenty of animated movies where the Riddler has popped up. Uh, he's in a really quick cameo in Under the Red Hood, right? Yes. But it's like a non-speaking like, cameo. Well, he gets hit in the nuts. And from memory, it was um, Bruce Tim that does yeah. like the wincing sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I think he was in Assault on Arkham. Again, it was the Arkham version. Uh, well, yeah, the whole point of that was to get the Riddler's cane. Yeah. That's what the squad were doing in there. He was in the Brave and the Bold. You know, he's been in, just, again, if we talked about all of them, it would take all night, but there's there's a million different the, the animated The Scooby-Doo one. Oh, the yeah. Brave and the Bold Scooby-Doo one, yeah. That's like one of my favorites. Hush. Hush. Uh, well, that's what you say it. That one made me mad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Why? What the hell? What the hell, guys? I really I still like it. I, still I really like, like movie, it. It is an odd choice. Yeah, I really like the movie until that. Mm. And then I'm like, what are you doing? Um, but yeah, so he's been in a lot of animated stuff. But anyway, uh, we waited and waited. He never showed up in the Nolan films. I th- For me, that's always one of the big what ifs is if Nolan had done the Riddler. I feel like he yeah. could have, he should have. I think he would have done a great job with the Riddler. So I'm always bummed that he never never was able to, or chose not to, look, I guess. I, I like Dark Knight Rises. I do, but I still look at that movie, you know, in hindsight. I didn't feel it at the time because I was just so caught up in the hype of it. But the direction that that movie takes from the get-go, I'm just like, really? Yeah. <laughs> could it, no, I okay. know. I know. But it's, you know, it's still fine. No, same. I, I still really like the movie. I do. There's a lot about it that I like. I just, like you said, there are just some choices where you go. Mm. I think it should have been a quadrilogy, and there should have been another chapter in there, and then if you mm-hmm. want to do Bane and like the end of the character, cool. But yeah, I just feel like there's there's one or two chapters that we should have seen that just aren't there. Yeah. Yeah, and it's funny because especially after the dark Knight, everyone assumed that no one was going to do the Riddler, but well, yeah. And, and Leo, Leo was the cast. Yeah. In everyone's yeah. mind. It was Leo. Yeah. Particularly after, um, um, oh shit. Ledger. What was the, after Ledger died? I don't know. No. no what was the movie that he did after dark Knight? Oh, Inception. Um, Inception. Thank you. My mind would kept going insomnia. I'm like, no, <laughs> That's Inception. a different one. That's Robin Williams as yeah, the Riddler. Exactly. <laughs> um, you know, in look, I think it could have really worked. I really do. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I would have loved to have seen his version. I think it could have been really cool. I mean, and again, I wouldn't even tr- trade Bane or Catwoman from Rises because I think they're both great. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, it would have been cool. But we all thought it was going to happen because again, you you just expect it if you're like, oh, you've done you've done Joker and you're doing Catwoman. You expect the Riddler to be in there, but he didn't do Penguin either, I guess. So he no. subverted With our the expectations. Whole mob, the whole mob element, Cobblepot and Black Mask could have, you know, not necessarily as a lead villain, but like I've, we've, I've always thought they could have worked well in that world as well. Well, especially because in the second one, was it Maroney, uh, Eric Roberts? Mm-hmm. That could, that could have been Cobblepot. Could have been right. You know, you could have done that or something like that. But I think they wanted the Maroni element for Two Face, though. Yeah, but even yeah. then, Maroni's no, I get that. Not the one who did it? It was the Joker, right? Um, but yeah, we so we we did a whole Batman franchise with no Riddler, so it did feel like okay, it, it was going to be his time, and so we waited and we waited, but the only thing that was there to hold us over was Gotham. And so in Gotham, they made Ed Nigma a lead in the show. And throughout the five seasons, he did eventually evolve into the Riddler. And then he was not the Riddler. Then he was again. Then he wasn't. Then he was um, because Gotham. And he was played by Corey That's, Michael yeah. Smith. And it's one of those things where I feel like with Gotham, I feel like they never intended to make him the full on Riddler. And then after like halfway through the second season, they're like, and we're out of ideas. So let's just make him the Riddler. <laughs> 
I think with Gotham, they never intended it to be like for any of it to be what it was. Yeah, like yeah. the show that it was is not what they pitched when you know with the initial launch of that show. And it's it's I dropped out of Gotham. I think partway through the third season, I'm just like this is just it's not for me. Mm. Like I I I did like the first season. Um, I was on board, but it just got too bizarre. I'm like, this is not what I signed up for at all. Um, but I will say with their version of Edward Nigma, um, I don't know if you agree with me here or not. I think it's Corey Michael Smith, isn't it? Yeah. I think he even looks a little bit like Jim Carrey, like just the actor. Mm-hmm. Um, he reminded me very much of, of sort of the pre-Riddler Nigma in in Batman Forever, the way he acted, the way he talked. This is all from memory because I haven't seen it for years. But he he reminded me of sort of the Nigma at Wayne Enterprises, you know, obsessed with Bruce. That version, like you know, that take on the character. Um, I was out by the time he fully became the Riddler. Um, I think I was well and truly out before you know the relationship with Cobblepot and everything. Um, I did jump back in and watch like the last three or four episodes leading to the finale just to, to watch it, to see how it ended. Um, but even from like, am I right in saying like the, the Riddler, I say, you know, in, in quotation marks, the, the Riddler, like it didn't have question marks on it, did it? It was just kind of this weird green and black pattern. Am I remembering that correctly? In the finale? Just in, like his his Riddler costume, did it actually have question marks on it? Not until the finale. Okay. In the finale, he had a full on green jacket, but it was a long green jacket, and it did have the question marks. Prior to that, over the course of the show, he wore the green suit, the bowler hat, but it didn't have question marks on it. Okay. Yeah, that's the that's what I can remember. I yeah. can't remember what he they did like the same the thing. Finale. They did the same thing with the penguin. Is like he like I wore... do remember penguin in the finale wore like the purple top yeah. hat and everything. Like he like... wore the, he wore most of the, the outfit until the finale, and then they both yeah. went full on penguin and riddler for the finale. Um, but I well, I will agree with you that Corey uh, Michael Smith looked he looks like Jim Carrey, but I don't think his performance is reminiscent of Jim Carrey at all. Um, I think he was great as Ed Nigma, I think he was great as the Riddler. Um, even when the story did really weird things with him, which they did, um, that was of no fault of the actors. And I always thought he gave a really great performance. Cause again, they did this thing where it felt like they were just like, Oh, he's, he will someday become the Riddler. And then somewhere in the middle, they're like, well, he let's just make him the Riddler. And then he is. And then he starts doubting himself and he, he quits being the Riddler again and he has to get his mojo back. Then he becomes the Riddler again. It's sort of this weird back and forth, but um, he was great. I think he was awesome. And he was, he was much more animated series than he was Batman Forever. See, I, I can only base it on the, the little bit that I saw. You you obviously watched the whole thing and know more about it than what I do, but maybe it was just too because he looked so much like him. Maybe that's just what my mind would go to. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. It, Bruno Heller's DC properties, man, they are... <laughs> look, I, I, I really like Pennyworth. I, I do, and I'm glad it's getting a third season and stuff, but... I mean, it does some wild shit as well, that show. <laughs> like, And they're both Bruno Heller shows. They are bonkers yeah. at times. Like, absolutely crazy. Oh, oh, Gotham was 100% bonkers, which is one of those things where you just had to go with it. And, but I've said this before, is like, even though I don't think it was a great show and there are certainly things to not like about it, what kept me coming back was The Penguin and The Riddler. Because I thought they were both really great. And then they did really cool things with other Batman villains throughout their, their scarecrow ended up being really cool. I really liked their Mad Hatter. They did some really great things with the villains that I enjoyed. I got enough enjoyment out of that. I watched the show, but I think Corey Michael Smith's Riddler was one of those things. There were, there were some really great episodes there, especially towards the end when they just let him wear the green suit and he started terrorizing people with riddles. Once that happened, like I'm like, this is a great live action Riddler legit. Yeah, see, I never got to that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. He he was really awesome. And so I feel like because of the reputation of the show, he might not get the credit he deserves. And he was the reason I kept watching the show. He was one of the reasons. I mean, there were multiple, but he was definitely, I think, one of the high points. 
Um, so Gotham was in 2014, ran for five seasons. And as we said, they, they, he didn't go 100% full Riddler till the finale. But up until then, he was, you know, 90% there. So what's the difference? Um, and then we waited and waited again for the movie. So Matt Reeves signed on to the Batman film. He teased us all pretty early on with that photo. Do you remember the photo from the Hollywood Museum of the mannequins with the Riddler, Penguin, and Catwoman 66, six, eh, 66 outfits? And wasn't it something like research or something, something like that? Like that? Yeah. Like, yeah, I do remember that, actually. And it's so funny because now in hindsight, it's like, oh, he he literally did tell us th- the three villains he was going to use, which I think is awesome. Because at the time we were like, oh, is he telling us something or is he not? Is he just at a Batman exhibit and, and having fun with us? Like <laughs> we couldn't quite tell. And I love that. It's like, nope, these are the three villains and it all panned out. So now we are finally getting a Riddler again. We're getting Paul Dano as Edward Nashton, not Edward Nigma. Uh, Edward Nashton was the alter alter ego of the Riddler that was created. I want to say like nine in the nineties. I could see on you. Like when he said Nashton, when he made that announcement, I'm like, okay, like he's not doing Nigma, but I knew Nashton had been used previously. Yes. But I think it was the late nineties when it was created. I don't know. <laughs> I'm afraid. He'll always be able to enigma. To I know. Me. I mean, and like, and I guess I should have known then when he's like, "Well, I'm not going to call him Edward Enigma." I was like, mm, "Okay." <laughs> um, yeah. But what we're getting, you know, is is I think the version of the Riddler that a lot of fans wanted Nolan to do. Because if you remember when all that conversation was happening during the Dark Knight trilogy, a lot of people said, "Oh, you know, imagine the Riddler." through the vein of the Zodiac killer. Think of the Riddler as Jigsaw. Think of as someone who, you know, tortures Batman through these riddles and he's really creepy. And you remember there was even fan fan made trailers and posters during the Nolan era of very like serial killer Jigsaw things that were supposed to be the Riddler. Do you remember all this? Mm. I do. And look, I'm down for that take on the character. I really am. Mm hmm. But it does, you know, know, it makes sense. Sure, sure, of course. And it's it's definitely the much creepier version of what the Riddler could be in the Batman. And if anyone can do creepy, it's Paul Dano. I have no uh, doubt that he'll be able to pull off creepy here. I also feel like a lot like with some of the best villains, like I I have the hunch that towards the end of the movie, I'm just going to want to beat the crap out of him. Yeah. In a good way, and like as in as in he's going to be so despicable and hateable and creepy that you're going to be like, God, Batman, get him. I I don't want to sound like I'm flogging a dead horse, but like that description of the Riddler that you just gave, like I'm so down for it. But to me, just imagine like a creepy looking guy in a suit. Like, he doesn't even need to have the bowler hat. Like, but just in, like, a, a, you know, just, like, an understated dirty green suit with, like, a question mark on the tie or lapel or whatever. To me, that's creepier. <laughs> and then, like, a guy in a garbage bag and a gimp mask. <laughs> I I don't know what he... Like, I mean, even Nolan would would differ from the comics with his looks... But they still like I could look at Bane and go, oh yeah, that's that's. Bad. I just I, I that promo shot that we keep seeing of Paul Dano as a Riddler, like the one clear shot of him. I just hate it. I, there's no other way to describe it. I really do hate it. I just I can't I can't come to terms with it yet. I I'm so hoping by the end of the movie that I I get it. Um. Dude, like I even read the the prequel novel this week. Like I am looking forward to this movie, and I'm the 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 version like the what they tell me about Edward in the novel. Um, I'm even down with that. Like the characterization is is really good so far from what I've read, and it, it that novel's canon. Um, I just I just friggin' hate the costume. Um. Yeah. All right. 
I know you're going to let me take the bullet on this, but I know you agree with me. Well, I, I do agree with you, but I also like, everyone already knows that. I, I, don't, I don't need to say it again, but I agree with you. Yes, I think the, the look is, is really bad, and I hope that everything else is enough to make me not care about it once I see the movie. Yeah. But I, I completely agree. Uh, you know that. So for us, the look of the, the Riddler doesn't work for the new movie, but I'm still really looking forward to the movie, and I do like what I am excited about is that now... God, oh, 05, 15, 20, what is it, 27 years later? It's been 27 years since Batman Forever. 27 years, we're finally getting the Riddler back on the big screen in a movie. And it's a movie that's going to take him seriously and make him a very credible threat against Batman. That's what I'm excited about. Look, I, I am with you on that. I, I do agree. Like particularly the last week or so like i am really starting to get more and more pumped for this movie i legitimately am like it's the wallpaper on my phone um i'm wearing my pattinson shirt more like i said i got the novel um i'm really keeping an eye out for because for some reason they've released the riddler and catwoman action figures over here the mcfarlane ones still haven't released the ones of batman um you know, I really want to get the action figure to put on my shelf of, of Batman. Um, who knows? After I've seen the movie, maybe I will get a riddle little put next to him. I don't know. <laughs> but at the moment, I, I don't really want one. But look, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm definitely in Batman movie mode. That's for sure. Oh, for sure. I mean, just today before uh, I uh, came here, I was at Target shopping and I always hit the toy aisle and they had an action figure of the Riddler right there. I had it in my hands. I looked at it and I was like, hmm, yes, no. Nah. I <laughs> that was it. me a couple of weeks ago. I, I saw them in the toy shop. I, it was I just put it back. They're, they're the two costumes that I like the least. I'm just like, oh, I'm good. I'm, I'm totally cool. I'll, I'll get a Batman one because of course I will. Um, look, I still don't like that costume, but I'm coming around to it. Um, I just really hope I, I can come around to the others. God, I am trying to find out when the Edward Nashton retcon happened, and I cannot find it. All I can find is saying, oh, yeah, at some point in the comics, they decided that his original name was Nashton, and he changed it to Nigma later, but I cannot find the year. So someone out there I'm sure is listening and knows me. Jay Yaws, Jay Yaws, if you're listening, do you know? <laughs> I have a feeling you might. Um so sorry. Call not, us on one, three. <laughs> I was I was listening to you, but I was just like, I know that I had looked it up previously, I think when they announced Paul Dano, and I was like, when did when did Nashton become a thing? And I swear it was in the nineties. Um but don't quote me on that. But anyway, point is is you know, I do agree with you. I still can't wait for the movie. Uh and I love that the the Riddler is coming back and hopefully he'll be a big hit, it'll be a great performance, and he'll be one of those big screen super villains for the ages because we are Riddler fans. We have been waiting for this and it's taken far too long to get more of him. So looking forward to seeing him back on the big screen. So yeah, I know that we, we do generally see eye to eye on the Riddler for the new film. And I'm sure we're going to talk about it in great depth after we see the new film. Well, if you have time, I'll find the time. You see, you say that. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, I, I, I'm gonna have to find the time to review the Batman. Come on. Of course you it's, are. And it's, look, Catherine's the same as Jess. Like she wouldn't begrudge you that opportunity. I don't think. No, she's she's super supportive. She's great. So I'm sure she'll help me out. And while the mother-in-law is here to help, you know, I think I'll be able to get away for two hours to talk to you and Jamie. <laughs> You say two hours. <laughs> well, <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. But. Because I imagine the Wayne Manor mailbox is going to be pretty oh, damn full. <laughs> well, I mean, that's the nice thing about a new movie is it's it's grist for the mill for multiple episodes. Oh, shit, yeah. It gives us lots to talk about. It will give us a lot. Um, but the Riddler has given us a lot to talk about, too. What a journey. Starting way back in 1948 and now back on the big screen here in the spring of 2022. 
Yep. I look. For, um, uh, yeah. I look forward in 2048 for us to to celebrate 100 years of the Riddler together. Man, that's that's really scary. Uh, I'll be. <laughs> I still won't own my house by then, which is fun. No, neither will I. But, yeah. Um, yeah. I'll tell you. I mean, I'll tell you when when we bought the house and we signed the paperwork. They. I don't know if this happens in Australia, but they give you like uh, this huge packet of dates. And it's a date for every payment you make. To sh- and then I was like, "Oh, okay." And so I flip. Think so. I flip to the last page to see the date when my last payment will be made on my house, and it's like twenty fifty one. And I'm like, ah, "I'm not even going to be alive to see this. Enjoy." <laughs> <laughs> twenty fifty one. Jeez. Um. Well, but by then the the Riddler will be one hundred and three. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, scarily, it's not that far away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, depending on how you look at it. But uh, because we have looked at all these different um, versions of the Riddler, uh, do you have any favorite Riddler stories that you think people should seek out? Anything that you're like, oh, if you want to get ready for the movie, here's some good Riddler stuff that you're going to really enjoy. Mm. I'm shocking at remember remembering comic book stuff. Um but I, I think I said it on one of the last episodes. I really liked the version of the Riddler in Paul Dini's detective run. Mm-hmm. Um, from memory, there was a pretty decent Riddler story in the Batman Confidential series too, um, where I think he came back as a... Or am I mixing that up with the Paul Dini thing where he sort of came back as a P.I.? Um, hmm. and, and tried to help the police and everything. I, I might be misremembering that, but I do remember there was a Riddler story in Batman Confidential, which was which is good. Um, I mean, the Batman the Animated Series episodes. Yeah. Particularly the first. Because the thing is, he only had two episodes. Really? Um, yeah, it was the, if you're so smart, why aren't you rich? And then the one with the... Um, uh, um, the false reality like where they're in the that they actually go into the computer where he's got um oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah there's only two riddler episodes wow i'm checking mm. that but i i'm shocked yeah like you feel like and he was in the comics more um you know the batman adventures comics but but the riddler episodes of, of batman there's Animated three series, dumbass there three? three what's the third one riddler's reform oh of course Yes. Because it's funny, you were, you, you were starting to describe, I'm like, wait, Riddler, and my brain did say, Riddler's Reform? Oh, maybe I'm thinking of Harley. But no, Riddler's Reform, if you're so smart, why aren't you rich, and what is reality? Only three. What is reality, yeah. But I mean, at Still, least that's like, a, it's that's a very... as many as you think there is. Yeah, it's a very easy triple feature. Mm. Getting ready for Look, the movie. Maybe... Maybe that could be another episode if we have time before the movie. Like, mm. hey, you now you did the Heart of Ice trilogy. We could do the three Riddler episodes. Yeah, That'd that's be true. Be fun. Um, but yeah, I obviously watch those. Um, the episode, I don't know the name of it, but from the Batman that I was talking about, um, where they get caught in the uh, the shipping container underwater. It's a, it's a good Riddler episode. And, you know, just for shits and giggles, chuck on batman 66 and batman forever and just have fun with them all right yeah no good call um yeah i mean as far as comics go i've 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 said this in the past dark knight dark city is really really fun i do feel like i want to revisit zero year because there is a possibility that could be influencing the new film as well um i read zero year Right around the time the pandemic started in 2020, because that's when the um, sort of the word came out that that might have been an influence. Yeah. So, yeah, Zero Year is a good shout, too, actually. Yeah, it was a good one. So as far as comics, those are the two that leap to mind. I do think I want to I want to check the DC Universe Infinite app. Do you ha- you guys don't have that yet either, do you? <laughs> no, of course oh, we don't. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe they just don't know that there are DC fans in Australia right um but i i want to go on the dc universe app i bet they will have a riddler story section because they always do stuff like that um and 
read that first story just because I'm curious. I want to I want to know what his personality was like in that very first story. Have a look story. at Comicsology myself. Oh, totally. Um, and you were talking about you know I so know how I you have to pay for everything. That's all. <laughs> True. Um, um, as a aside from a subscription, which would just be easier. Yeah. Um, I know you love the Batman Adventures comic. They had a really great Christmas. I was going to say episode Christmas issue. That was a Riddler story as well. And I can't remember I the need to check my trades. Yeah, I can't remember the number, but I just know the cover is this big Christmas tree on fire with the Riddler standing in front of it. Oh, I do remember that. Yes. Yeah, and I read it this I year think at then Christmas. It might have been the Batman and Robin adventures by then. Okay, sure. The new Batman Robin <laughs> adventures, whatever. That's yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but I read it this year for Christmas and it was really good and I went, "Oh man, this could have been another Christmas episode. Why didn't they turn this into an animated episode?" So that one was really fun, too. Um, But then, honestly, go back and watch the pilot of Batman 66. Enjoy some uh, enjoy some Frank Gorshin while you're at it. I wish I knew Gotham well enough to go, Okay, I know you're not into Gotham, but watch this episode because the Riddler's really great in this episode. But I don't know well enough. There's one. It's funny because there is one that I can picture where he like laid these traps and it was really cool. And it was this really great Riddler episode, but I don't I don't remember when it was probably season four somewhere in there. So I know that's not much help. Um, not at all. <laughs> yep. Sorry <laughs> about that. Research Andy. Jesus. I know. I'm so sorry. I suck at this. <laughs> Everybody. Podcast, yeah. To hell with this. Um, anyway. Uh, so, okay. Some ideas to, to prep for uh, the Batman. And then we talked about all these different versions of the Riddler. Tell me your favorite or, or, top two or three uh top three it'd be batman the animated series um frank caution and then jim carrey Mm -hmm. in order okay well two out of three ain't bad i'm with you um (laughs) yeah animated series and frank gorshin definitely but then i'm gonna go with Corey michael smith i thought you would yeah yeah he's underappreciated in the role at least by people who didn't watch the show but all right, good times. A little walk down memory lane with the Riddler. So tonight I'm going to put on my Riddler PJs that you gave me, curl up with a good Riddler book, go to sleep to the sounds of Batman 66. It sounds lovely. <laughs> drink I'll, drink I'll coffee out of my Riddler mug from McDonald's from Batman Forever. Spiritually, I'll be with you. Wow, oh, great have my riddler cane i'm gonna walk around town with it all week long <laughs> just swinging it around yep just swing it around see if anyone notices <laughs> Dude, it's 2022 you probably wouldn't even get a second look this is true um but anyway this was really fun trying to think of something random to do and this this i think was pretty good i do apologize yeah. i will go on the record i apologize for some of the things i did not know off the top of my head I know I'm supposed to be the expert here and I failed you all. So just imagine me standing at the grave of uh, Bruce Wayne sobbing like Michael Caine saying, I failed you. I failed you. You trusted me. Just borrow borrow from the James Bonding podcast where their motto is um, fans, not experts. All right. That's fair, too. I mean, we're expert ish, but shit, you know, there's 43 years of junk knocking around up in my brain. And dude, I'm telling you, in the next couple of weeks, you're going to lose a lot of that. It's about to get worse. Dad, dad brain is a real thing. Trust me. Oh, cool. <laughs> Can't wait. All right. Well, and I'm young. I know. <laughs> dad brain's a real thing. I know. Thing. Thanks for that. Um, all right. Well, a little celebration of the Riddler, but Riddler will not end here. He's going to be a big movie star in before you know it. I'll just say before you know it because I don't know when. Uh, very soon. And then we'll see what happens. Will he survive the Batman? Will he come back to riddle another day? We'll just have to wait and see. Um, But that is where we're going to wrap up this episode of Holy Batcast. Brendan, thanks for making the time. Of course. This was good fun. I was looking forward to it when we we sort of had the idea the other day. Yeah, I've been looking forward to today to get together and have a chat. Awesome. All things Riddler. All all Riddler all the time. Uh, We're not doing the Wayne Manor mailbox because this was recorded. 
you might be listening the can. Yeah, you might be listening to this a week after we recorded, or two weeks, or three weeks. I don't even know. It just has to come out before the Batman, really. That's the only yeah, time de- time restraint. It depends. Depends when Andy's wife has his, has the baby. Yeah, it depends when that little baby comes out. Come on, come on. We're waiting. <laughs> Insert. Oh, you know, you know that gif of we're waiting. That's Ted Knight, the Riddler. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, Brandon, always good time. Tell our friends where they can find you. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Lowy007 um, or in the Real Fans group or um, you can search for my podcast, The Nightlight or the Sitting on Our Rings podcast. All right. Sweet. Um, you guys, I already told you where to find me. You already found the show. Good for you way to go um but thank you all thanks for downloading the show thank you for subscribing if you haven't subscribed what are you waiting for subscribe you don't want to miss one of these chats between me and my pals subscribe you'll never miss an episode please rate and review us on apple podcasts visit holybatcast.com find holy batcast on facebook twitter instagram or youtube to search for holy batcast even though we didn't do the wayne manor mailbox this time we'll do it soon on a on a real in continuity episode so if you've got something for the wayne manor mailbox you can send that to holy batcast at rf4rm.com a big thank you to gora Venkateshwar. he does our theme music his work can be found at gvtunes.com also a big thank you to manscaped thank you guys for sponsoring the show so if you're out there listening and you're on the fence go check out manscaped.com if you're going to make a purchase make sure you use that promo code batscaped but that'll do it On behalf of Brendan and myself and Edward Nashton and Edward Digma, this has been Holy Batcast. We'll see you next time. Same riddle time, same riddle channel. Holy Batcast is not affiliated with Warner Brothers or DC Entertainment. The views and opinions shared by the participants are theirs and theirs alone and do not represent the companies or organizations they happen to work for. Well, bat something or other, isn't it? Who invited you? You know what happens to gate crashers? They have to match wits with the Riddler. Riddle me this, you little. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. That was a good time. It was. It worked out. Quite a few tangents there that weren't Riddler related. Nah, who cares? Hey, what the that's, hell? That's part of the that's, fun. That's, that's what podcasts are. I ate before this episode. I'm, I'm in a much better mood. <laughs> that's good. <laughs>